Alright, hello guys. This is my elementary observation presentation. Let's jump in. So my school was Hickey Elementary, which is located in Plano, where I grew up. And the school is in a nice neighborhood near some areas for farms and larger properties. Um, when you first walk into the building, there's a good amount of security, you know, you have to buzz in from the outside. They unlock it once you say what you're there for, and you go in, you get into the office, and then you have to sign in and create, like, a profile, kind of, so that you can have a sticker. And then you go in, and the first thing that you see is the library. It's a really nice, big library. Um, and then there's a hallway that extends really far left and really far right. The art room is immediately on the right side of the library, so front and center. Um, and my teacher was Sylvia Ibarra, who had been teach or has been teaching for 35 years. She's very experienced. Um, she definitely still finds joy in her job. She does plan on retiring within the next two years or so, but she definitely has an appreciation for what she is able to do for students and how she impacts them. And she just loves when students come into her classroom and want to enjoy art or come into the classroom like during lunch or recess or something and they wanna do a different project or help her clean or something. There were some fifth grade girls that were working on a poster for a teacher. So that was really sweet. Uh, let's see. So the classroom layout. When you first enter, there's a long table with about 10 seats around it. Um, at the center is a big colorful rug for the students to sit around at the beginning of class. And then when they're done with their art project, they can go sit there again. And then on the right side of that rug is another really long table with about 10 seats. Um, behind that second table is a sink for you know, washing your brushes, rinsing out cups and things, and there's plenty of cabinets and drawers around the sink too for storage. On the very right wall, there are two rooms. There's a pretty large closet. Um, I was surprised at the amount of storage that was in there. You know, really tall shelving units on every part of the wall. Uh, Missy Barra was certainly taking advantage of all that space, and it was divided up by grade levels and days of the week kind of thing. And then the next closet space next to that was for the kiln. And she does use that for like fourth and fifth grade, I think. They're the ones who get to use clay and do that sort of thing. The younger grades only do that air dry stuff. Um, but yeah, that was cool. And then there's more shelving units on the inside of the classroom or along the walls for like drying racks and other materials. There is even a cabinet for props and costumes because Missy Barra also has to help out with like little theater productions and things. So that was pretty neat. Um, let's see. So the schedule. So that's organized by days of the week and color coordinated kind of thing because each grade and then a section of each grade gets to come to class once a week for like 50 minutes. Um, it's pretty, it goes by really fast. And the class is always started with the essential question. Uh, and the kids come in and they sit around the carpet, crisscross applesauce, you know, and my teacher introduces the topic. And a lot of times she'll show a video at the front and introduce an artist for every lesson. Um, she, oh, she also uses a microphone when she's teaching. She has one just like clipped to her shirt and it goes into the speakers in the ceiling so that everyone can hear her. So that was pretty neat. I, I thought that that was only for like kids that are hard of hearing, but she just does it for every class when she wants to get their attention or like is teaching them and stuff. And then when students have finished their artwork, they 
get to pick a book from the little reading nook that she has near the sink, and then they come sit on the carpet and they have to read their book, and then sometimes they get an iPad afterwards, but other times they get to go, like, pick out a puzzle or a little activity to do either by themselves or with one other person. Sometimes it's, like, building blocks or, like, straws or there's, like, different things that they can choose from. And occasionally the iPads are used as bribery or rewards so that the students will, like, remain quiet and focus on their art. Um, and then the last 10 minutes are for cleaning up and lining up at the door. The Missy Barra doesn't really have, like, a specific system for cleaning up. You know, she doesn't do, like, the colored stickers or numbering on the tables and stuff. It's just kind of, if you use these materials or if you made a mess, then you clean up after yourself. I personally would like to do, like, the color coordination on the chores, but she, I, I do understand why she does that, so that it's like, you take care of yourself and whatever mess you made. And then students have to sit in their seats and wait to be called to go line up at the door, and they have to push in their chairs. And sometimes once if they're done with a project, then they get to take it with them. And then at the very end, she asks them the essential questions again, and she'll ask them about their artist and the history and stuff. And she'll occasionally give out these like star dollars for them so that they can go buy little things in a different class. Okay, some do's and don'ts. So these were directly said by her. So do give the younger students more things to do that are simple because they have short attention spans. And so one example that I got to see was that I think they were second graders and they were given the iPads first and they had to use this pottery app and they sculpted their own little piece of pottery or like a vase or something. And then they had to fire it pretty quickly in the app and then paint it and put designs on it, whatever they wanted and fire it again. And then once they were finished, they would get out a piece of paper and then they'd have to draw their pottery, like a still life. And so there's just, that's like, you know, multi-step and it keeps them busy and engaged. Um, another do, believe and support your students. Some may take longer to complete a task, but they can do it with guidance. There was one student that I got to interact with and he definitely wanted me to do his work for him sometimes. And I would come over when he asked for help and I would just try to show him what to do and ask him to follow along suit. And, you know, I would have to do it a few times until he got it down and could do it on his own, but I never did the project for him. I, he just needed a little more scaffolding. The third do, stay consistent. When you make a rule, stick to it. When you're telling them to do something in their project, stick to it, don't make exceptions. Um, a don't. Don't say, if you keep doing this, then I'm gonna do blah, blah, blah. Just do it. And then the second don't, I don't know if I fully agree with it. It was just what Missy Barra told me. She said, don't email parents, just call them so they can't turn something around on you with written words. I, the only reason I don't fully agree with that is because I feel like written words would be safer as long as you choose the right words and, you know, make sure that there isn't any underlying tones of anger or something in there. Um, but I, I do think calling is really good too. And I think it makes it more sincere and genuine when you call a parent to talk to them about their student. some learning resources. So there were two shows that Missy Barra liked to use to introduce topics. One was Peppa and Pig, which is good for introducing an activity. The most popular one that I saw was for pottery. And then Art with Maddie and Dada. That's great for introducing artists because they get to go back in time and meet these artists and, you know, see their process and talk to them. And that I like that show a lot. It was really good. And then another resource on the iPad is all of the hundreds of art apps. There are so many. I wrote down three or six of them that I thought were really good. The Pottery app, Paint Sparkle, Think3D, Kaleidodraw, 
NGA Kids and Paper. The NGA Kids is more historical art stuff, um, but all the rest are more interactive. They get to create and experiment with the art. And yeah, the, I really like the iPad stuff. Some lessons that I got to see are still lifes, self-portraits, 3D paper sculptures, line sculptures, Valentine kite collage, Valentine self-portrait, pinch pots and 3D forms, abstract art, and paper name sculptures. Um, so I thought all of these lessons and projects were pretty fun for them, especially, you know, like the pinch pots and 3D forms. The students had to create a couple of different 3D forms before they could move on to a pinch pot. So I thought that was good just for learning some basic shapes. Um, there was a lot of repetition, it seems, for the lessons, so I feel like I'd want to kind of challenge my students more and mix it up. But I would say like the 3D sculptures and self-portraits are good for the younger students. And self-portraits are very common to do for every grade level, but I don't think I would want to do it as much. Takeaways. Um, so one takeaway that I have is students need more art than once a week. I'm sure we all agree on that. Most of the students I got to interact with really enjoyed being in the art room and looked forward to it every week. Um, oh, that's my dog barking, sorry. And yeah, so students, they need more art. You know, they need that outlet to be creative more than once a week. I'm sure they get some art activities in the other classrooms, but not necessarily in the same way. And another takeaway, when you've been teaching for so many years and get into a comfortable routine, you should definitely find things to spice up the lessons. Missy Barra, she's been teaching for 35 years or so, and it just seems like she's doing the same things over and over every year, you know, meeting all the criteria and stuff, but it just seems really repetitive. And I think it's important to mix things up to keep yourself as a teacher um, engaged and excited, but also to try out different things with the students and see what they can do and, you know, push the boundaries kind of thing. And lastly, art apps on the iPads can be, be very beneficial for experimenting and brainstorming. Um, I definitely didn't think it was going to be that beneficial for them at first just because, you know, it's on an iPad, they'll get distracted, but it was fun for them and they got to experiment with different art forms. All right, lastly, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brown, for being a fun, engaging, and encouraging teacher. I appreciate your flexibility and empathy. You are definitely one of the number ones at UNT. Thank you. And then thank you to all of my friends for making class fun and having each other's backs and never giving up. You guys rock. Go Mean Green. <laughs>